Hi, welcome to Riga Station and thanks for joining me again for part two of my Latvia adventure. Now I'm a wee bit nervous about this one because I was just meant to be staying in Riga tonight but I've just gone and booked a train that goes as far east as you can go in the country. It goes to a place called Zalupi which is right on the Russian border but I think I'll get off a stop before in Ludza. Now Ludza is the oldest city in Latvia. Well, I call it a city. It might look a bit different when we get there. But I checked on booking.com and it looks like I can get a hotel there tonight. So let's go on another crazy adventure into the unknown. We'll go and get some supplies and then we'll jump on that train. And if you're departing from Riga, picking up supplies is no problem at all. The station is attached to a big mall with a good sized supermarket just steps from the station concourse. So I'd say avoid the small shops at the station and get yourself over here. OK, I've got all my supplies and now we're looking for the train to Zilupe. Platform 1, track 11. I always get confused in Europe how there's platforms and tracks. No idea what that means. Ah, it's fine. It's actually quite clear when I'm up here. Osmani. Diesel Wilciens, Numur, Astoni, Seshi, Chetri, Riga. Well, there's my train and I think we're going to be on board for about four hours according to my wee ticket. I'm genuinely nervous about this because there's been no planning at all. I just need to get on board and the first thing I need to do is try and book a hotel before I arrive. It's a very busy train, but I don't know if people will be going the whole way or getting off at intermediate stops. One thing's for sure, there's going to be nothing to see out the window. Okay, this is a bit scary. I just stepped off the train like 15 minutes before I thought I had to because he said this was Ludza, but there's no station name, there's nothing. I'm hoping there'll be something here. I hope I've got off at the right place. Otherwise, I am screwed. Okay folks, this is my worst moment yet. I've got off at the wrong station. I heard an announcement on the train and it said Ludza. And I thought that means that we're at Ludza. And there were no actual signs on the platform. It's just these tiny little stations. So I got off the train, the train leaves, and it turns out that I'm at the stop before Ludza, which is called Thirma Sirma. And there's nothing here. There's absolutely nothing here. There's no train till tomorrow. So I've really screwed up here, folks. I've got no idea what to do. The road just leads into the forest. There's absolutely nothing. Ah, this is a problem. There's not even a little village or anything where I can get a taxi or get someone to give me a lift. 
I'll show you here, when you come off the platform, this is what you've got. Absolutely nothing. I knew this would go wrong. I guess I could try and knock on this station door. Hmm. There is a light on, but I kind of don't want to disturb them, but I don't see much other choice. Oh, I'm really not sure what to do here. Okay, so I heard some cars off in the distance, so I walked towards them along this really icy little track through the woods and there's no point of reference, so I'm seeing if I can try and order an Uber or a boat or something like that that'll get me to Ludza. I knocked on the door of a house where I saw a light on, but it was just this old lady, I felt so sorry for her and she didn't speak English, so she just kind of shut the door in my face, unfortunately, but I can understand why she did that. <sighs> yeah, when I got up to the main road there, it's just a road, there's no pavement, there's trucks going past really fast, so it's a little bit dangerous to try and walk to Ludza. Oh, I am officially a complete idiot. 30 kilometers from the Russian border and I'm walking through a forest. I'm gonna sign off just now folks because I need to conserve this torch battery. I might need it later. Okay folks, we've made it to Hotel Ludza. Unbelievable. I managed to hitch a ride. It was just a young lad. He didn't really speak much English, but he got me here. He dropped me right at the hotel. What an absolute legend. So I put 20 euros in his hand and I gave him my business card as well and said, please contact me. I'll send you something from Scotland. He saved my life tonight, I tell you. I am an absolute idiot. Right, let's get checked in. That is the most scared I have ever been in my life traveling. Welcome to Ludza. This is okay, isn't it? I'm just so happy to be here. Yes, I've got my own toilet, shower, single bed, and a wardrobe that opens. This is extreme luxury. Ah. Oh. To the guy that picked me up, if you ever watch this, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Paldies, spasiba. time to check out but I do not know where I leave this lovely little key maybe I'll just go back up and leave the key in the door I let's do that decision made right let's go and explore Ludza
Which way do we go? I don't know. But anyway, my hotel, Hotel Ludza. Great little place, very basic, but, oof, it's slippy. Um, but better than my place in Riga, that's for sure. So if you are in town, highly recommended. They do breakfast as well for five euro, but I'd rather get out and find somewhere else to go. So let's go for a walk or a slide. I'm sorry if my filming is all over the place today, but it is very slippery. We've had some kind of light drizzle and freezing temperatures and it's a deadly combination. There's no way I'm staying on my feet today. But anyway, welcome to Ludza. Now I said yesterday this is the oldest city in Latvia, but these days it's got a population of about 7,500, so for argument's sake we'll call it a town. But it's a very important town because it sits at a very strategic location. We're on like the main road between Riga and Moscow, and Russia's only about 30 kilometers from here. So that's quite a scary thought actually, 30 kilometers from an active war zone. But yeah, this is a very strategic town and over the centuries, it's been under the control of the Germans, the Swedes, the Poles, the Russians. So a very important wee place. And today, we're gonna have a look around. I say the weather's not the best, but we'll make of it what we can and then we'll be on a train out of here at around about three o'clock this afternoon. If I catch that train, I've had many problems with the trains, as you know from last night. Oh, well, there seems to be a bit of a thaw on at the moment, and look at those, they're absolutely deadly. It was around this point that I noticed my camera had frozen again, but what I didn't notice was that the freeze had also somehow corrupted the audio. So in one of the coolest places I've ever been, I was left with nothing more than images. This is quite frustrating to be honest, as I was very proud of my wee vlog from Ludza, but it is what it is and I'll give my best tour of this historic town down by the Russian border, minus any of my ramblings from the day. Hey, maybe that's a good thing. The first place I stumbled upon here in the shadow of the Church of Assumption was this wee wooden chapel with its door wide open. Ludza was once home to incredible old wooden buildings, but they were largely lost due to a combination of a fire in the 1930s and the devastation of the Second World War, so it was a real treat to find this wee place still standing. Not far from here, up at the top of the hill, I found the small bridge over to the ruins of Ludza Castle, a medieval castle dating back to 1433. As I crossed the bridge, I could see what looked like farmland off in the distance, but this was actually the big lakes that surround most of the town. The castle sits in a commanding position with views far and wide, and I must say it all looked damn fine in this snowy weather. back down in town it was time to try and find some food and also some shelter from the bitterly cold weather and the slippery streets. Just outside the Orthodox Cathedral many of the locals were doing their best to keep the pavements clear but I must say the hardy babushkas were dealing much better with the conditions than I was. A good old wander about town eventually led me back to the main square and the comfort and sight of an open cafe where I opted for a warming bowl of Solyanka and some chicken and chips. What made me laugh most though was the music blaring out the desire for a white Christmas. I think that's fairly certain in these parts. After such a hearty lunch, it was a real shock to the system to step back outside again onto the cold streets. 
I headed over for a look at what I thought was a deserted bus station, but it turns out everyone was huddled in the warmth of a very Soviet looking waiting room, where you can see on the back wall the crest of Sword and Key, commemorating Ludza's position as the oldest town in the country. And with that, the time had come to make the long trek out to the train station, past some more wooden buildings, some older than others and some which have certainly seen better days. It turns out the train tracks were easier to find in the station itself, and here you can see the direction of Riga one way and Russia the other. Now for some reason the station was completely absent from Google Maps on my phone and signage wasn't up to much either, so with sleet starting to fall from the sky it was a very grumpy Steve that trudged along some deserted tracks before eventually finding Ludza Railway Station. By this stage I was absolutely soaked so it was a relief to find the door to the waiting room open and I had the whole grand place to myself to wait for the arrival of the 1543 back to Riga which of course arrived bang on time without any fuss to pick up us 15 or so passengers ready to dry off in the warm comfy carriages. I've got to say the only bad part of the journey back west was that horrible sinking feeling in my stomach as we pulled into Sirma station again. I guess it's all part of the adventure but seriously that's one mistake I don't want to be repeating in future. I made it out in one piece though and that gives me the opportunity to say thank you so much for coming along with me today on this ramshackle journey and here's hoping I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>